Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the inverse of a cubic function. So we have f of x equals x cubed minus 3x, and we're going to be finding, or we're going to try to find f inverse of x, which is the inverse function for f of x. Well, let me show you a graph first, because the graph is important to understand what is going on here. We have a cubic function that has two, I think, or three x-intercepts. Yes, three at zero and two other values, right? And those values you can find easily by setting the y equal to zero. That's not the point. What does this mean? This graph has a horizontal tangent at two points, one of which I showed you here, at negative one and at one, which means it has a maximum and a minimum. What is that supposed to mean? It means this function is not always increasing or not always decreasing, which means it's not one-to-one -one or injective, right? And what happens when a function is not one-to-one? -one? Then it does not have an inverse, or we could probably say it does not have a unique inverse. So we kind of need to split it up into three different pieces such that each piece is always increasing or always decreasing, therefore by adjective, I mean injective, and then we can try to find it. So when we attempt to find the inverse, I'm also going to show you a result from Wolfram Alpha. Your job is to find out which inverse are we considering. I'm also going to show you a different graph where you can kind of see the function and its inverse together. Okay, cool. Let's get started. How do you find the inverse of a cubic function? Well, first of all, how do you find the inverse of any function, right? That would be a really good question. So first you replace f of x with y, and then you solve for x. Why? Because if y is equal to f of x, by solving for x, you're basically finding something like f inverse of y. So that's how the inverse function works. So at the end, you will find the inverse, but that's just going to be in terms of y, and then you just switch to x again. Okay, but they're not the same x's. Be careful because we use them all the time, okay? So here's what we're going to do then. We're going to try to solve for x, right? That's the next step. To solve for x, we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and write this on the left-hand side because most of the time, at least some people are used to writing it this way. And then from here, we can try to solve for x. How do you solve for x though? That's a good question. That's actually a million dollar question. And the answer is by using the cubic formula, okay? Whichever telling guy you attribute the formula to, here's how it works. We have a plus b to the third power minus 3ab multiplied by a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. You probably know this identity. If not, make sure you are familiar with this because this is such an important identity. And by replacing a plus b with x, we're getting a cubic equation that looks like this. And by comparing the two equations, we kind of get the following. In this equation, the coefficient of x is negative 3. Here, it is negative 3ab. So I want this to be 3, and my constant term is y, so I want this to be y. This gives us a system of equations, and solving the system is basically will give you the cubic formula. And this is kind of like formulaic because we're solving a more general sort of cubic, but still, this is not the most general form because you probably want to solve x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals y. If you solve for x here by using the cubic formula, then you actually will get a formula. But, I mean, if you try to solve it using this method. The problem is, though, you have to get rid of x squared first, so you need to use substitution, make it a depressed cubic, so on and so forth. Too much work. We're not going to worry about it. Let's go ahead and focus on this. From here, I get the following. a cubed plus b cubed is equal to y and ab is equal to 1, right? Because this is supposed to be negative 3. Sorry, I wrote 3, but that's supposed to be a negative 3, the coefficient of x. So this gives us a system, but is that a cubic system which we can solve? No, it is quadratic. Why? You'll see, if I cube both sides here, I get the following. And now I can go ahead and use these two equations, but I'd like to use substitution. So why not isolate b cubed from here? and write it as y minus a cubed. And then you're gonna substitute that here. Make sense? That's the formula, that's how it works. So a cubed times b cubed, which is y minus a cubed, equals one. 
distribute and put everything on the same side, a to the six minus y a cubed plus one equals zero. And now you get a quadratic. It's not hexic because it's by, is it tricubic? Anyway, something like that. You get the idea, hopefully. Let's go ahead and call this something. How about C? Let's set A cubed equal to C. But wait a minute, this equation is also true for B because if I did the opposite, isolated A cubed, it will give me the same thing. So the roots, the C values that I find from here are gonna be A cubed and B cubed values at the same time. And how am I gonna find A? By cube rooting C at the end. And of course, I'm gonna do it twice, okay? One for A, one for B. And it doesn't matter at the end because x is equal to a plus b, so it does not matter. Make sense? Hopefully you get the general idea. Now we have the following equation from here by after the substitution. It's going to be c squared minus yc plus 1 equals 0. And with the help of the quadratic formula, you can get the solutions negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is minus 4, divided by 2. This is where things kind of get critical because this is just the C value, right? And C is equal to A cubed and B cubed. So if one of them is A cubed and the other one is B cubed, then we kind of get the following values for A and B. Let's say A is the cube root of Y plus the square root of Y squared minus four over two. And then B is the one with the minus sign, exact same thing, but there's a minus sign in between. And here we go. And then by adding these, we get the x values. So x is going to be the cube root of y plus the square root of y squared minus 4 divided by 2 plus the cube root of y minus the square root of y squared minus 4 divided by 2. Great. And since x gives us what at the end? f inverse of y. This is f inverse of y. So I can kind of write this as follows. I don't want to write that again one more time because you already have it. It's too much work. I'm lazy, right? This is f inverse of y, but I do need f inverse of x. So that would be the cube root of x. You're going to replace y with x. That's all you have to do, but it's not the same x. Just remember that because we use it for a purpose, but then discarded it. Now we're using it again for a different reason, okay? So that should be the inverse of my function. But the million dollar question is, a cubic equation has three solutions, not always real, but in case these solutions are all real, which one gives us which interval? That's the million dollar question you need to answer. Let us know in the comment section down below. But we at least found the solution, at least one of the solutions, right? Let me go ahead and show you what I got from Wolfram Alpha, which is pretty much kind of like the same thing, right? With some variation, of course, it wrote the cube root of two separately and also used the conjugate or conjugacy, whatever. And then here's another graph that kind of shows the cubic function, x cubed minus 3x, and it's inverse. But notice that its inverse is different on different intervals. And of course, the inverses, for example, these two pieces are inverses because they're symmetrical with respect to y equals x. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.